Today we are learning to solve linear equations. Success criteria here is to understand and use a process to solve linear equations. Uh, use your knowledge of working with integers, decimals and fractions to find solutions. Uh, using your knowledge of your algebraic expressions involving uh, expansion of the brackets to find solutions. Further on, what we'll be looking at is using your knowledge of inequalities to solve inequations and also we'll be applying all that we've learned to try to solve some problems that will involve equations. So let's get started with uh, some of the questions that we've got here. Okay. So first thing that we're going to be looking at is equations that range from something like 2x equals 8, and we've got to work out what the x value is, something you can probably guess right away, to something that's a bit more complicated with uh, some decimals in it, which is a bit more complicated to, to guess on. And as such, um, a good thing is that we, we have a process to follow that will allow us to solve any type of equation of this sort. OK, so, so the aim is to find the number that the letter represents by ending up with one letter on the left and with a number on the right hand side. The steps um, that we're going to be involved with is doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to show it that way. I know we've done some change side, change sign, but I'm going to do it with uh, doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So if I add something to the left hand side, I'm going to add it to the right. If I subtract something from the left, I'm going to add it to uh, subtract it from the right. If I divide something on the left, I'm going to divide on the right, multiply on the left, multiply on the right. OK, let's have a look at some examples that we've got here. Let's run through these ones that will allow you to go ahead and do the work for today. Right, so first thing I've got is 2x is equal to 6. OK, so 2x, I only want 1x. So if I want 1x, I'm going to divide this side here by 2. If I divide that by 2, I'm going to divide the right hand side by 2 as well. So what I've got here is these twos are going to cancel out and become 1. So that will leave me with x on this side, or 1x, is equal to, and 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. And that's going to be my solution for that one there. So here I've got 7x is equal to 35. So I don't want 7 of them. I'm going to have to divide this side, left-hand side, by 7. If I divide the left-hand side by 7, I'm going to divide the right-hand side by 7. So the 7s will cancel out here, leaving me just with x. And 35 divided by 7 is going to leave me with 5. So x equals 5 in that case there. Here we've got some fractions that we're going to be working with here. So 100x is equal to 50. I don't want 100 of them. I want to divide the left-hand side by 100. If I do that, I must divide the right-hand side by 100 as well. So 100 divided by 100... Well, that'll go to 1, so that'll leave me with 1x on this side, and 50 over 100. Well, I could simplify that down by dividing both of them by 10, which would leave me with 5 over 10. But I could take that a bit further, because they're both on the 5 times table, so what I'll get is x is going to be equal to a half. I'm going to leave it as a fraction, whether it's a fraction like that, or it's going to be a top-heavy fraction. I'm going to leave it as a fraction when I get my solutions for these. Next one, I've got uh, 6x is equal to 16. I don't want 6 of them. I'm going to divide this side by 6. I'll divide this side by 6 also. Okay. The 6s are going to cancel out and make 1. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. So that leaves me with x on this side. And that leaves me with 16 over 6. But I know that that can be simplified down. Both even numbers could divide them both by 2. That leaves me with 8 on the top and 3 on the bottom there. So I'm going to leave it as it is. That's a top-heavy fraction. I'm just going to leave it as, as that there. I'm not going to try and work out any decimal. OK, we're going to look at some negative numbers over here. So 3x is equal to minus or negative 21. OK, so I don't want 3 of them. I'm going to divide this side by 3. So I'll divide that side by 3 also. So the 3s are going to cancel out to 1. So that's going to leave me with x on this side. And minus 21 divided by 3 will give me minus 7. So usually what we can look at is if we're dividing 3 into 21, I'll get 7. If I've only got one negative sign that's there, it's going to be a negative answer. If I have two negatives that are there, it'll be a positive answer. Right, let's look at question 5. I've got minus 6x is equal to 18. So I'm going to divide each side by minus 6. So it's that number there I'm going to divide by. Dividing this side by minus 6 as well. So the 2 minus 6s will cancel out, leaving me with x on its own. 
and what I've got left here is 6 into 18 goes 3 times. I've only got one negative sign, so it's going to be minus 3. Question 6, I've got uh, minus 9x is equal to minus 36. I'm going to divide this side by minus 9. I'll divide this side by minus 9 also. So the minus 9s are going to cancel, leaving with x is equal to. So I've got 36 divided by 9 gives me 4. I've got two minus signs, so that leaves me with a positive answer that's there. Right, moving along. We'll finish off these ones. Right, so I've got 2x plus 1 is equal to 13. So I want all my letters on the left-hand side and all my numbers to the right-hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get rid of this plus 1. I don't want that there. I want it over the other side. So what I could do is uh, I'm going to take it away from this side. So I've got plus 1 there. So if I take 1 away, then these are going to cancel out. But if I do take 1 away from the left-hand side, I'm going to take 1 away from the right as well. So that leaves me with 2x. The plus 1, the minus 1 cancels out. So that leaves me with 0 from there. And 13 take away 1 is going to give me 12. I'm now back to the type of equation we've worked with before. I'm going to divide this side by 2 because I don't want 2x. And I must divide this side by 2 as well. So the 2s are going to cancel out. That will leave me with x is equal to 6. Okay. One of these you can probably guess, but you need a process for it. And that's what we're really working on uh, today. Okay, for this question here, for question 8, um, I've got minus 2 there. So 3x minus 2 equals 37. So I don't want a number that's on its own there. So I'm going to add 2 to that side. And what that will do is that will cancel these out here. And I'm going to add 2 onto the right hand side as well. So that's going to leave me with 3x on the left hand side. The minus 2 and the positive 2 cancel. And that leaves me with 39 on this side. What I'll then do is I want 1x on its own. So I'll divide by 3 left hand side, right hand side. And these will cancel out. Leaving with x is equal to 3 into 39 is going to give me 13. There's my final answer for that one. On to question 9. So this one here is just rearranged slightly differently, but it shouldn't make any difference to the work that we're doing today. So again, I've got a 2 at the front. And remember, that's a positive 2 that's there. So I don't want a 2 on that side, so I'm going to take 2 away from there, and that will get these cancelling out. If I take 2 away from the left-hand side of the equals, I'm going to take 2 away from the right-hand side. So these are cancelling out. That leaves me with minus 5x. Don't forget that negative sign that's here. Okay? And 32, take away 2, is going to give me 30. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each side by minus 5. When I divide my minus 5, these are cancelling out, leaving with x only on this side. And 5 into 30 gives me 6. I've only got one negative sign, so it must be a negative 6. OK, so some of these here that you can possibly guess, but... Do the process, work it through. Okay, these ones here, okay, I've got some decimals in it. So let's try and work through these questions that are here. So first thing that uh, I want to get rid of is that uh, 1.3 that's sitting there, and that's a negative 1.3. The sign in front always is attached to the, the number. So I'm going to add on 1.3 to this side, and I'll add on 1.3 to this side over here as well, the right-hand side of the equals. So leaves me with 2x over here, these cancel out, and that gives me 12.8. And I add them together. Now, I don't want 2x. I'm going to divide by 2 at that side there. I'm going to divide by 2 on the right-hand side. So that leaves with x is equal to, and 2 into this here will give me 6.4. Final answer. Okay? A bit more difficult to guess, obviously. 11. Okay, so a more complex question that's more like the um, the more difficult one that I'd mentioned at the start. So, but we're just going to do the exact same thing with the process. I'm going to subtract from this side 3.68. If I subtract from that side, must subtract from the other side as well, 3.68. Okay, so what I've got left with here is 0.4x on this side here. If I can't do that in my head, then all I would do is do a, a bit of working to the side. But if I think about that, that's going to give me, that's going to be 2.496, okay? 
but just do work in at the side and bring it back into here. I don't want 0 0.4 uh, x here. I'm going to have to divide by 0 0.4. I divide the right hand side by 0 0.4. Okay. So these are going to cancel out and leave me with leave me with an x on this side here. And on the right hand side, well, I'm dividing by decimals. The way I like to divide by decimals is to have a, a whole number on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to times this by 10 on the bottom. So on the bottom there, I'm going to have 4, okay, by timesing it by 10. If I times the bottom by 10, I can times the top by 10. And that's going to move the decimal point into there. So that's 24.96, okay. So I'd prefer to do it that way when I'm when I'm working with decimals. If I divide by 4, so 4 into 24 is going to give me 6. 4 into 9 is going to be 2 with 1 over, so that'll give me a 16 there. 4 into 16 gives me 4. So there's 6.24. And obviously what you can do there is you can either just take that to the side and do a division and work that one through. So what we've done there is we've worked through a, a number of questions that uh, should help you out. Uh, to do the work that we're going to be uh, assigning today and the ones that we're looking at today for success criteria uh, will be that uh, you understand and can use the process I've described to solve linear equations and you can use your knowledge of working with integers, decimals and some fractions in this case here to find solutions. So that's where we are with uh, the work that we're going to do today. Okay, the work that I'd like you to complete will be the worksheet that uh, I will have signed to you in Teams. And what you'll see is the questions that are here. They'll range from the easier first off type questions to get us used to working with equations, through to a two-step process, through to some decimals, and perhaps at the bottom you can try and work these out without a calculator. If you're struggling, use a calculator to work them out. So I just wish you all the best with these here. And remember to communicate with me if there's any issues with uh, your solving equations to this stage.